Good morning, Beulah. A name is a precious gift. We are gradually meeting all our new neighbours, so there's obviously a lot of emphasis on our names. And that made me think. A name is a precious gift. Do you like your name? I like my name so much better in English than in Afrikaans. Here people call me Carleen. The pronunciation is, is gentler, I don't know, softer. I like it much more than the Carleen that I grew up with. Yes, sometimes by chance or by grace, we stumble upon a new name. It comes to us from our life's experience. It's a name known only to us who receive it. And sometimes we are given a new name to celebrate a call to a more radical way of life. The name or the new name is a reminder of the new person we are to become. Abram becomes Abraham. Jacob becomes Israel. Saul becomes Paul. Yes, a name is something to be lived into. It is someone to come home to. Your name is a world filled with the power of you. Call people by name shortly after you've met them and see how they come alive. And, and being able to name something or someone gives you a certain power and responsibility for it or for him or for her. And being able to name a fear in your life gives you power over that fear. Claiming and naming is part of, life exper of life's experience. And the best part is our Father gave us our names. In Isaiah 43 verse 1 it reads, that's the NIV. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And I particularly like the English Standard Version where it says, listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named my name. And then in Isaiah 49, verse 16, it says, see, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. The Lord knows us by name. He wrote it on the palms of his hands. He called us by our name. The Lord knows those who are his. Thank God he does. Thank God he doesn't sit there rubbing his chin, trying to figure out if we belong to him or not. Whom the Holy Spirit conceives, the Holy Spirit claims. We may at times be half-hearted, but at no time we are abandoned or lost. Those born of the Spirit are the children of God by the will of God. You can read more in John 1 verse 11 to 13. He has no unwanted sons or daughters. When he called your name, he didn't rattle it off mindlessly with a million other names or, or struggled with the pronunciation like I used to do as a school teacher with a new register at the beginning of the school year. God knew you before he formed Adam from the dust. He called your name with passion and anticipation. Since before you were born, he's been preparing you and working in you, enabling you both to desire and to work out his good purpose. 
the path towards your destiny was not hidden. It was driven through the soil by the south end of a cross. Take up your cross, your daily cross, and follow me. To follow Jesus closely is to fulfill your calling completely. Dr. God, Gordon Fee's quote gave me, and hopefully you, great relief. It says, God's building rests not on the shaky foundation that we know God, but that he knows us. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you so much that you love us, that you called on us before the world began. We adore you and we praise you. Father, please bless and keep us all through today. Remind us that you, Lord, are our loving Father. You see us and you love us. And in you, we live and we move and we have our being. Guide us so that we can hear your call and fulfill your purposes and plans for our lives. Give us, give us the confidence to bear your name with pride because we are sons and daughters of the King. Amen. Enjoy your day.